Fair is a word that has a lot of meanings. Uh, it's like, that's not fair, or let's go to the fair. Um, one of the really, really old-fashioned meanings for the word fair is beautiful, like attractive, all right? So I think that's convenient because I want all of your graphs to be fair, fair graphs that look good. What does fair stand for? Okay, let me help you out. The first F, the first letter rather, F stands for factorize. Now I gave you a graph. I gave you a graph in the first place that was already factorized. If it's not factorized, you factorize it. Why is that? Why is factorizing important? Okay, e everything gets easier to find. Asymptotes, intercepts, uh, all the region stuff that I had to show you that I showed you before. All of them are easier to find if you have it factorized. Okay. After factorize, A stands for asymptotes. Now, please note there are different kinds of asymptotes, right? Different kinds of asymptotes. So the first one, which is really easy to find, are the vertical asymptotes. Where do vertical asymptotes come from? You, you generally you look at the denominator, right? So when the denominator is equal to zero, when the denominator is equal to zero, you will get a vertical asymptote. So that's a domain restriction. You can't ever cross that because denominators can't be zero, right? This is why you can't cross vertical asymptotes, but you can cross horizontal asymptotes. Um, horizontal asymptotes like the one we had up above, y equals zero, where do you get them from? It's nothing to do with the denominator. They're limits, right? So you think about limits as x approaches positive and negative infinity. Positive and negative infinity. Okay. Now, just a little quick note, which I will come back to later on. There's vertical, there's horizontal. There's actually a third kind called an oblique asymptote. Um, they're asymptotes that are off at a funny angle. Um, they're very much like horizontal asymptotes in that they're about limits. So I will get to those in due time. They're a bit more complicated. They're sort of, sort of outside the scope of the course. The course never actually mentions the word oblique asymptotes. But I will show you later on, once we've learned some stuff in polynomials, about how to find them. Okay. That was asymptotes. You might have had a guess about what I stands for. Intercepts. So just remember, like asymptotes, there are two kinds. The two kinds of intercepts you're looking for are x and y. Okay, lastly, R stands for what we did up here in pink. What was R? Region, region. Regions, thank you. So regions are about the sign of your graph. Are you positive? Are you negative? Shade in the accordion area, and then you know where your ultimate graph has to go through. So this is really about sign. Is it plus or is it minus? Okay. These four steps will get you through. These four steps will get you through. So what I want you to have a go at is using those four steps on this graph here. x minus 1, x squared plus 2x. Factorize. Search for your asymptotes. Evaluate your intercepts. If there are any, shade some regions. And then off you go. Okay? I'll let you have a few minutes to get ahead started. Look at how we did it here. How did I do the regions here? What did I rely on? I drew some lines, right? I drew those orange lines that corresponded to the... What did they correspond to? X, X minus 2, X plus 2. In other words, the factors, right? If you know the factors, that's why you have to factorize. Then you can draw those orange lines and then off you go. Okay? What I've done is all of the setup work. I've factorized, you can see it right here. I've put in all my asymptotes, there are three. How do I know what the vertical asymptotes are? I look at the denominator. If x equals 0, the denominator will be 0. If x is negative 2, the denominator will still be 0. So that's where I get these vertical asymptotes from. I've got a horizontal one. Where does that come from? As, as x approaches infinity, you take the limit. The same thing is happening on both sides, in fact, uh, which is pretty much a universal thing. So I've got my y equals 0, and you can see it labeled in there. Make sure you label yours. Uh, my intercepts. I don't have any y-intercepts. Why is that? Because I already determined one step ago that you can't let x equal 0, it's in the denominator, right? So therefore you can't get any y-intercepts. You can get an x-intercept though, um, and you get that from the numerator when the numerator is 0, right? So by the way, can you notice, factorizing means you look at the denominator, you say, oh, 0 is here, give you asymptotes. You look at the numerator, 0 is here, give you 
intercepts. And you can see I've got mine right there at x equals 1. I then shaded my regions, just like in the previous example, I have three factor lines, which gives me this up-down pattern. And now comes the fun part. Now I have to look at this and fit in a curve that obeys all of these constraints that I've set up. Okay? You will see this quite frequently. Look at the bottom left-hand side. What shape are you going to get? You're going to get that sort of hyperbola shape over here, sort of stuck in this corner. So you go ahead and you draw that guy in. What about in here? What's happening? Okay, now, even though it does look like I'm not going to say a parabola because, and we've talked about this before, it's got asymptotes. It's got a domain restriction, which parabolas do not, do not. So therefore, it sort of looks like that, but there you go, there's the shape. Then you've got this last weird bit over here. Now, what's happening? What's happening? Um, we know a few things. We know we've got to get down to this asymptote in the corner. We also know we have to approach this asymptote here, and you notice I've drawn it just with a gentle downward curve. Why is that? Why does it have to be coming from that side? There's an asymptote, you know it's approaching. But how do I know it's approaching from that side, not from this side? Because that's the region that's positive. Because that's the region. This is why we do this, right? You shade the region. You said it has to be positive in that area. Because look at my orange lines. One, two, three. They're all positive. There's no way you can be coming from down here. So that means you've got to be coming from up here. But if you're up here somewhere and you've got to get back down to here, that means you have to, at some point, turn around. Okay? So therefore, I know, even though I don't have heaps of precision at this point, I know at some point it's got to whip back downwards like that to meet the other section that I knew had to approach this asymptote. Okay? I pointed this out before. Um, that exact position where it turns around and this exact position over here where this turns around. Later on when we learn about calculus and differentiation, we'll have tools for finding those spots. But right now, I just want to get the general shape. That's all this is about.